Hey, this is Gerald here with Popple. We're joined by Boyd Rudy, networking slash real estate expert. Hey, Boyd, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Okay, so why, why don't we start with a little bit about uh, yourself uh, exp and experience in networking? We'd love to hear about that. Uh, well, I've, I've been a licensed real estate agent for 23 plus years, uh, associate broker, um, owned my own uh, uh, independent brokerages and ran several uh, other brokerages in the area. Um, during that time, um, I learned how necessary networking is in growing your business. Um, obviously, you know, the more people that you can connect with and, and, uh, and grow with, uh, the better your business is going to be and the more your business is going to grow. I think within real estate, it's it's just impossible to make the argument that you can get away with being a highly successful realtor without being into networking. But in today's day and age, can you get away with it without in-person networking? Does in-person still play a major role? I think in-person still plays a major role. Um, you know, and I, you know, for a while there, we went away from the in-person stuff. You know, especially a lot of the the networking. Um, groups out there went to, you know, Zoom formats and s stuff like that. So we kind of got away from it, but I've found lately that a lot of people are craving that in-person networking again. And, and you know, they don't want to meet over Zoom. They want to go have a cup of coffee or have a drink together or, or you know, meet in a group and where you can kind of get with people face to face. Um, but that being said, I've done a ton of networking through social media and social groups online uh, that has helped me immensely grow my business. For realtors, which online social networks are the most effective? So I'm I'm older, so you know, Facebook is is my kind of my go to for for networking. Um, you know what I love about Facebook. Well, most is most home buyers are older too, so maybe you know that that's why I'm curious about this. Yeah, I, I, you know, I tell my agents, I'm like, you know, listen, Facebook is where your clients are now. Instagram is where your your next clients are coming from, and you know, Snapchat are going to be your clients in five years. So, if you plan <laughs> on being in the business longer than five years, you should probably get to know those other um, those other mediums, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, all of my networking, um, for the most part, has been through Facebook, through Facebook groups, through um, uh, just Facebook in general as well. You know, just reaching out, connecting with other people uh, in the area. Um, but local groups has definitely helped me um, grow and establish a network uh, huge with, with other individuals in um, in my area. So lo local groups, uh, what, what kind of groups and what does that look like if you join? Is it called a networking group or is it just a group of people in the area? Uh, well, there's some networking groups out there uh, for sure for local businesses, um, you know, that are Facebook networking groups. Um, I do a lot through just local online. Um, a lot of the cities or communities have their own Facebook groups. So just joining them and then contributing that way um, has helped me to network with other people and other businesses. You know, a lot of people go in looking for recommendations for contractors or, um, you know, where to go to eat or whatever. Um, you know, I've found if I can be a resource for them where I can tell them, hey, you know, I use uh, Jamie. Jamie's great for heating and cooling or, you know, uh, Bill is a, a great local painter and I'm able to, to use my connections and be, you know, pretty much the I know a guy guy, um, I'm able to connect with people that way. And then um, just kind of keeps me top of mind when they are ready to buy or sell a home. Okay, cool. So we had, we had a little blank there, but it's fine. I'll, I'll create that, I'll fix that in post. Um, and if you see any static during that'll get fixed as well okay so let's just let's just set up for the next question here
Okay, so if somebody's getting started in networking, or let's say they're a realtor and they understand that networking is just going to be part of the game for their career, how, how do you suggest they get started? Um, well, I would see if there's any local networking groups that are already established that you can get into. A lot of times, it's really hard to do that because you know the the top positions in those groups are always realtors, mortgage people and insurance people. So, uh, you know, those spaces don't come up very often. Um, so if there's none available that you can join, um, even a, our uh, local chamber of commerce op offers networking groups as well. Um, and I've joined all of all of those uh, or created groups in those uh, as well as creating my own networking group too. You know, uh, you can always just start with other local business owners, you know, and say, hey, I, you know, I want to uh, create a, a forum for uh, us to refer each other back and forth and um, start your own meetings. Let's say you're interested in real estate. It's you, you believe it's the career for you, but you're a little bit afraid of the fact that it seems like it's a career meant for extroverted people. Um, one, do you find that to be the case? And two, if somebody is a, a bit more shy, how, how do you advise them? So I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm actually a bit of an introvert myself. Um, I just have learned through 23 years of doing this that, you know, it, um, I got to prepare myself to get on stage. Right. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm usually pretty shy and, and that, but, you know, I just kind of trained myself that when I'm in those situations where I need to, um, in a networking situation, something like that. Uh, I just got to get in the, that right mind frame to and kind of step on stage and, and play the the part, if you will. Any any uh, drinks or other types of things that you do? Is, you know, a couple of shots of espresso, anything like that? Um, I kind of have like a whole little routine that I go through um, before I before I go on a listing appointment, before I meet with a client or before I go into a situation like that, right? So I kind of have my own little, um, I've got a certain playlist of songs that I listen to. Um, I've got, you know- Metallica. I, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not Metallica, I actually, I do a lot, of, it was a lot of gangster rap stuff. Uh, <laughs> 1990s gangster, I guess, but uh, so, you know, a lot of Ice Cube and, and Ice T and NWA and all that kind of stuff. Oh, man, that's great. OK, so what about the opposite sort of person, the type of person that thinks they're just going to float into real estate based on the uh, the the sheer force of their personality and, and just being great socially? What, what do you say to that person? The biggest the best advice I can give to that person is. You know, remember that people like to hear themselves talk. You know, the, the number one mistake that a lot of agents make is they get into a room and they, they start a conversation and they just have diarrhea of the mouth and just you can't get a word in edgewise with them. Well, that's going to turn off a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be like, yeah, well, you know, they're, they seem nice, but, you know, I, I can't even get a word in edgewise. I'm going to go talk to someone over here. Um, your, my best advice to, to someone and even to the, the introverts, too, and this is how I get around and, and kind of deal with with this whole thing. I just ask a ton of questions because now I'm not talking. I'm just listening to what they're telling me. Makes sense. So, um, you know, focusing on others, uh, not being so self-centered, that that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely just, important. Uh, yeah, and just asking and engaging questions, right? Like, you know, I, I ask about them. I ask about, you know, what their interests are, what, you know, what their hobbies are, how you can help them, um, you know, those type of things. Do, do you have a specific way of phrasing any of those questions or any just go-to questions that work a lot? Um, I just usually just uh like if we were gonna you know if i was coming up to you at a, a networking thing i would just be like hey i'm boyd i'm with Keller williams you know uh what's your name and what do you do right and then Easy. and then basically once you say you know hey I, i'm gerald and I, i'm a plumber then 
I'm just going to echo whatever you tell me and then ask a question regarding, oh, you're a plumber. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, that business or, you know, your day to day or, or how I can, you know, that type of thing. Right. So um, just acknowledge that whatever it is that they tell you and then formulate a question based on that. What are some other top skills that are important for getting good at networking? Um, learn how to use a calendar uh, and be on time. Those are probably, you know, the, the two things that, that most realtors are notorious for are um, being late to an appointment or missing an appointment altogether because they, they forgot about it, right? Or, or it wasn't in, they didn't put it in their calendar. So, um, you know, use a Google calendar, make sure you've got alerts and alarms and, and um, things to, to let you know ahead of time where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be, um, or, you know, have an assistant that, that can tell you that stuff because, you know, when you show up late, especially, you know, I, I'm a military relocation specialist. So if I show up on time, I'm late to, for those type, for my military clients, right? I got to be there 15 minutes beforehand or, or, or I'm late. Um, and can lose clients that way. So uh, same thing with, with, you know, other individuals when, when you're networking, setting up one-on-one -on -one meetings, things like that, right? Um, no one wants to have their time wasted or feel like their time isn't valuable to them by you showing up late. Why are realtors known for being late? That's that sort of, does that speak to the personality type or what's that about? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's because, you know, to be a, a, a good agent, I mean, um, you know, a lot of agents out there are completely ADHD or, or ADD, right? And so um, that gives you the, the energy and the bubbliness and, and all that stuff and all the go, right? But at the same time, like you may forget this or you forget that, or you're trying to focus on too many things and you know you don't put it in your calendar or whatever. And then at the last minute, you're like, oh no, I need to be over here. Um, or a lot of times you'll be in the middle of a conversation and you, you'll lose track of time, right? You're at an appointment. Um, so that's the other thing is make, make sure you schedule enough time for your appointments and that you've got enough time in between appointments because in case you have a runover. Um, I had a, a listing appointment yesterday. Um, sweetest lady, I, I, uh, I was actually uh, a referral from so, uh, someone on my network, one of my, uh, my heating and cooling guy. So, um, and uh, so basically she told me, well, Jamie recommended you, so I'm I'm going to use you, and I trust you implicitly. I I don't have to compete against anyone for that. That's just a, a layup, right? So, but at the same time, she was you know, a sweeter older lady that that her kids aren't around much. So I spent a little extra time talking with her, and probably went over half hour what I what I could have. Um, but I knew that I had enough time scheduled there that I could. I could do that. And I wasn't trying to rush to get to the next appointment. Nice. How do you nurture networking relationships beyond the initial connection? I know that a lot of real estate purchases being, you know, the biggest buy most people make in their entire lives are not uh, things that happen on a first meeting. So how do you nurture those long-term buys and uh, even beyond the sale? Do you keep the relationships going? Yeah, I, I think the best way to do it, truthfully, is to come from a, a, a space of giving. And, you know, so like one of the messages I send out to um, to my clients and, and people in my network is, you know, hey, um, just wanted to reach out, let you know I appreciate you, and um, see if there's anything I can do to help you, you know, with your life, your finances, or your business. Um, and then, you know, just doing that and reaching out on a, on a regular basis and asking people what it is I can do to help them, um, you know, because if I if I give you a dollar, you're gonna be like, oh, that was cool. What well, gave me a dollar? Awesome. And then if I give you another dollar, you'll be like, oh, that was really nice of Boyd to give me another dollar. And if I give you another dollar, then you're going to be like, okay, Boyd gave me $3. I should probably do something for him back, right? It's just our, it's human nature to want to reciprocate. 
when someone does something for you. So that's kind of the, the way I've operated um, all, you know, in the 23 years and kind of what I've learned has worked best in, over that time frame. What are the biggest mistakes for new realtors when they're uh, getting into the networking game? Calling everyone they know and asking them if they want to buy or sell a home. You instantly become that multi-level business friend that no one wants to answer the phone for because they know that you're going to be calling trying to solicit them. It, the, the fact of the matter is, is, is most people are going to buy or sell a home maybe three, four times in their lifetime. And the chances of them wanting to buy or sell a home at the exact time that you contact them on that day at that are slim and none. So your best bet is to come from, you know, like I said, from a space of giving and, and calling them and just seeing how they're doing, what's going on. And then if you bring up real estate during that, you know, it's naturally going to come up as a subject. And as soon as it comes up, people are going to want to ask you about it. So, you know, if I'm having a conversation with someone, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I was in your neighborhood the other day was showing a house, just wanted to call and, and see how you're doing, how things are going. They're instantly going to ask me pretty much 90% of the time, oh, which house were you selling? How much was it going for? What, what's things like in my mark, in my sub, blah, blah, blah. And so that starts the real estate conversation without me actually calling them and saying, hey, you looking to sell your house? When it comes to networking events and conferences, um, do you have any tricks for the small stuff, like remembering people's names and that sort of thing? Um, names are hard for me. I, I know faces. I, I'm always good with faces. Names are really hard for me. So I try and connect with them via Facebook or some sort of social media channel right then like hey what what's your you know let me send you a friend request that way i've got them i've got them in my network and i can go back and and reach out to them that way um i usually end up with a stack of business cards at at the end of a conference um i don't really i'm not very good about taking those business cards and putting them into a system or follow, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, social. Well, media. that's just too good of a setup for me to not jump in for <laughs> Popple digital business cards because there's this thing called CRM sync where if you do that, it does it for you automatically. Or there's the paper business card scanner that'll upload it to your, uh, to your CRM automatically. So any realtors watching the solution to the problem that Boyd just highlighted is Popple. But uh, yeah, I keep going, boy. Well, there you go. So uh, I, you just solved my my problem for the next conference I go to. Uh, that's another mm -hmm. thing too. I, I, uh, for agents that are looking to grow their business in that, you know, make sure that you go to as many out of area conferences as you can. Like, go out of state, go to another state, go to a couple states away, and go to. Uh, conferences and, and and network with other agents in those areas. Um, I've got a ton of referrals from agents all over the nation that that refer to me all the time um, because I've established those relationships at these conferences. How has networking changed since you've been in real estate? You've been in real estate for a long time. I'm sure social media, obviously, being huge, um, but. In addition to that, what else have you seen? Well, when I got into the business 23 years ago, I had a pager and a bag phone. So, you know, instead of giving people my pager number, um, you know, it, it's it's all about, you know, and I mean, truthfully, even email back then was, was just starting, right? Like they just switched from the big Bresser books to an online dial-up connection to the MLS. So I've seen it kind of, of, you know, go from how technology has really affected our industry and social media and all that, you know, from the beginning. And um, 
just utilizing all that stuff now that, that you didn't, we didn't have back then. I mean, I, it was, you know, back then was, was sending out handwritten letters and, and knocking on doors. Um, not that I still don't do that, but you know, it, that was the only way that you could really get in touch with people. You talked about networking groups being something that's still, you know, relevant and valuable, but, um, how, how do you choose which groups to participate in any suggestions for new realtors? You know, that's a great question because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll get into a group and you might realize that um, that group's not for you, right? Like I, I, when I have new, bring new realtors onto my team, like I tell them, you know, listen, you need to join a, a different group. I want you at, at a different group each week for networking. And it doesn't matter if it's real estate related um or if it or not like it could be if you're into running like find something with a common interest with other people if you're into running go join a running group if you're into sewing go join a sewing group it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be business or real estate related the whole key to it is just meeting other people with similar interests and and connecting with them and you know if you're in a group and you don't like the group or you don't want to go to the group because you don't like the format of it then find another group. There, there's millions of groups out there. Um, so, you know, if you don't like the fact that, you know, they, you, you have to do your, your 60 second stand up and a 10 minute presentation and all that kind of stuff, then don't join a, a, a BNI or an LBN type group. Join a, a personal interest group. All right. Some great advice there from Boyd Rudy. We have one more question, Boyd. What does the future of real estate networking look like? Uh, what trends do you see and, and how can realtors prep themselves for success for the rest of the year? Um, well, I, I mean, the local groups thing and having, um, having your network of people um, in the same groups that you're in is definitely huge, right? So if someone goes into a local group and asks, you know, Hey, who's a, who's a great local realtor. And I raise my hand and I'm like, Hey, I'll help you. And, and that's it. Then, and there's, you know, I see in these groups, there's, there's 50, a hundred, 300 comments within 20 minutes of all these different agents. Right. But if, you know, my past clients or, you know, my, my contractors that I network with or whatever. And they're saying, Hey, call Boyd, Hey, call Boyd, Hey, call Boyd. And now there's seven, eight, nine people that are recommending me. Well, the person in that group is going to call the person that's being recommended the most, right? They're going to be at least have a shot. You could be horrible. You could be the worst realtor in the world, but if you've got eight or 10 people recommending you in that group, then chances are that someone's gonna gonna reach out to you and, and request to at least sit down with you. Thanks, Boyd. Appreciate your time. My pleasure.